All right, I'm about to go camping, so I don't really have time to do this inside the house, but I wanted to leave this here. I read the first 70 or so pages of Gormenghast because it's been on my TBR for ages, and as part of this project, I'm, go I'm trying to go through as many gothic things that are still left unread. Uh, and this, this definitely has the atmosphere that I was going for. Um, now a lot of people will say, and rightfully so, that J.R.R. Tolkien is kind of the godfather of fantasy, but they also give, uh, Mervyn Peake a lot of credit for being very influential as well. Now imagine, uh, J.R.R. Tolkien writing a gothic I don't think gothic horror yet because I'm not exactly sure where this is going but a gothic um, story about this massive castle that goes for miles and people live within the castle their whole lives for generations it's been something like 70 generations this Gormenghast family has had this castle and they have all these servants and there are all these areas that are basically untouched to anyone. Uh, and, you know, people have their little different pockets within the castle. And it is, it is, I don't know where the plot is going yet, but it is maybe the most atmospheric and it's the most atmospheric book I've read almost ever. And what an amazing character study that he does it is the biggest oddball or, or, or selection of oddball characters in the first 70 pages or so we we have this man who just lives within this area where once a year they will pick three statues that people carve and they bring to the castle walls and that's what, the only time of the year where there will be some interaction between people out of the castle and in the castle. And uh, it's like this big competition. They'll pick the three best ones and they'll burn the rest. And the three best ones go into this, what was it? Hall of Bright Carvings or whatever it was. And there's a guy there who lives in there. Basically no one goes there, but he lives in this hall and he has his hammock there and he's he just is secluded and he just his, his whole life is dusting off these these statues uh man the the character work is so interesting another guy who comes in who's kind of like the assistant and he goes within the castle we see a lot of what's going on through his eyes and he is described as this almost skeletal type and Every time he moves, you can hear the crickling and cracking of his bones. Um, and we have, we go into the kitchen and we see this massive chef. And, you know, the way he speaks is so boisterous and wild. And, and he has these underlings that are learning from him. And some just can't stand the guy. Some love him. Or one can't stand him. The, the rest love him. Uh, it was so interesting. Just their whole life is kind of within this kitchen. We have this lady who, you know, we have a, a room filled with cats. That's for like the, 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 the duchess or, or whatever you would call her. We have this lady who seems to be able to speak with the birds. Maybe we have one who kind of has this weird dream-like odd experience up in this attic. We have, uh, who's the other? Uh, we have this doctor who can't stop laughing as he's kind of describing things. But, you know, I'm not explaining it in the greatest way, but all of these characters just pop from the page. And I decided uh, a, a few chapters in to see if there was an audiobook. Because sometimes I'll be doing yard work or something. And if it's something that lends itself to it, if it's a good audiobook, I'll, I'll go ahead and do that. Um, there's a guy who made an uh, audiobook for the first one, Titus Groan, on 
on YouTube. It's available there. He did an amazing job. I've only read, I've only done a couple chapters of his, but he did an incredible job with the voices. So I would say give it a give it a try. His his audiobook, I, I think, you know, I don't think it's professionally made, but man, it's he adds atmosphere atmosphere to it. <clears throat> Excuse me. And he does an incredible job with with the voices and things. I would totally, totally recommend it. Um I am super interested. I already kind of knew what it was about, sort of. I don't know where it's going, but uh, I have something similar kind of involved with my project, and uh, it it's going to be great to see. It's going to be great. I'm so excited that I finally got to this one, and I would recommend it. It's one of those things where you could read a passage over and over at times and think, like just kind of get drawn into it and some things you're just kind of confused about but as far as its literary merit if you're able to just go through it and enjoy the journey uh i think this would be great for for a lot of people it's certainly different uh and i'm i'm just super impressed so impressed can't wait to get to the rest of it and I'll I'll give an update at the end here but I wanted to leave that I bet if someone was to like read this high which I am not doing but if someone was to do that I bet they wouldn't even get past the first page like it's just so odd at times but really really great just imagine like Tolkien uh rewriting you know doing like the labyrinth David Bowie, not that, but like a, a version of this, you know, I hope I've been able to describe it, but it's really, really, really cool. So I'll leave that there and uh, I'm off to, I'm off to do this other stuff. So talk to you later.